What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingBee.com and in this video, we're gonna look at NumPy for data analysis with Python. All right guys, in this video, we're gonna look at NumPy, but before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and be sure to check out CodingBee.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap and which is definitely going up in the new year 2020 very soon. So if you want that price, grab it now while you still can. Okay, so this is the second video in my data analysis course, and we're going to look at NumPy in this video. We're going to start to look at it. There's a lot of things we need to go over in NumPy. And NumPy is one of those things that you're going to use always with data analysis for Python. I mean, always but it's really boring. It's just like math, right? It does all the hard math stuff behind the scenes. It transports data around. It does all kinds of things that are very, very boring. You know, you have like matplotlib, you could throw up cool graphs and things. You have pandas, you could do all kinds of cool stuff. NumPy is the thing sort of behind the scenes doing the hard work. And people don't like to spend a lot of time learning it because it's boring, right? But it's just very, very important. It's very integral to everything. And if you have a good understanding of it, the better understanding you have, the better you're gonna do it, all your data analysis stuff. So we're gonna spend uh, you know, a few videos on it at least, maybe a little more. And in this video, I'm just gonna start to talk about what it is and sort of give you uh, a quick sort of, uh, you know, a, a few examples of how to use it. And then we're gonna get into more detailed stuff as we go. So first of all, NumPy is used for math. Like I said, linear algebra, and arrays. And there's something in NumPy called a NumPy array. And that's really the workhorse behind NumPy. That's what you're gonna use day in and day out. And, you know, think of an array in Python. Python calls arrays lists. You know a Python list. So we can make one real quick. Let's just call it uh, names. And you do, you know, you use the square brackets and then you just put your items in your list separated by a comma you know, like that. And then if you wanna call one of those items, you can just, you know, we can print out, for instance, uh, names, and then you just call an index item, or an, an index number. So the first thing in a Python list is the zeroth item. The next one is the first item, and the next one is the second item. So zero, one, two. I know there's three items, but that's how Python lists work. So if we wanted to call John, we would just call zero, oops, come back. And we can shift enter to run this and it prints out John. If we want to, you know, do Mary, it's Mary. So this is a Python list. We all know Python lists, we use them for everything. Well, you know, I made this as names. You can make one as, you know, nums equals one, two, three, same exact deal. Uh, we can print out nums. And if we want the zeroth item, which is one, it'll print out one. So that's a that's a Python list, an array. Every other programming language in the face of the planet calls them arrays, Python calls them lists. Well, that's great when you're dealing with small lists, small things, John, Bill, Mary. That's just three items, right? In data analysis, you're likely going to be doing thousands of items, millions of items, right? And Python lists on their own, they're great, but they're not quite as fast. And NumPy arrays allow us to, uh, behind the scenes, they tap into C, they're written in C, or they're, we could do something with C, the programming language that speeds things up very much. So that's why we like to use NumPy arrays. And it's, it's, we're just doing stuff like this. We're just making lists, or from now on, we're going to call them NumPy arrays. And it, we can do stuff with them. So like I said, it's boring, but it's important because data analysis is dealing with data. And to transport the data around, we're going to use NumPy arrays to do that. So let's take a quick look here and let's just kind of start playing around with this. So, so to use NumPy arrays, now I've got my uh, development environment that we set up in the last video. We're, we're in our virtual environment. We're in our C DA directory data analysis. I ran the command Jupyter Notebooks our Jupyter Notebook, and it opened up our web browser to our little notebook here. It's just our testing notebook. So in order to start using NumPy, in the last video, we pip installed NumPy. You need to do that. 
And once you do it once, you can use it forever, but you have to have pip installed it at least once. And then to use it in our notebook, we have to import it. So we would just say import np, no, numpy as mp. So shift enter, now that's in our memory. Now we can use numpy forevermore. And we call it as mp because we're gonna be doing things, uh, creating numpy instances like np dot, we wanna create an array for instance, um, and let's just make one real quick. Uh, let's go one, two, just a very simple three. This is a NumPy array. And we, we make it by creating an instance of NumPy that we defined up here. Why did we call this NP? It's just what you do. Everybody always calls it NP, just call it NP. You can call it anything you want, but NP stands for NumPy, so we're gonna do NumPy. So here we can assign, this is a NumPy array. Just this, just as simple, and it's very much like a Python list, right? We just created it, or we just put this inside of this array function, this NumPy array function, and boom, now it's a NumPy array. So we can assign this. Let's, let's create a variable called array or, or ARR, right? Now, if we want to print that out, we can just ARR, and boom, it prints out our NumPy array. So we can do all kinds of stuff to this, and I should say. Generally speaking, NumPy arrays come in two forms. There's vectors and matrices, matrices, whatever. And a vector is just this, it's just one dimensional, right? It's just a list. Uh, a matrix is two dimensional. So you have, or, or more than one dimensional, multi-dimensional, I guess. So you could have three, or let's go four, five, six. So now this is a matrix. It's a multi-dimensional array. It's an array of array. Well, we we'll probably need to wrap this in an array. There we go. Now it's a multi-dimensional array, right? And you can see when it prints it out, boom, now we see there's two dimensions, right? So wrap your brain around that vectors and matrix. They're just, you know, you're almost always going to use matrices because matrices, whatever because your data is always going to be complicated usually, but sometimes not. So you, you might use a vector, but this is the only difference is they look slightly different, right? So that's cool. Now we can do all kinds of things to this. So let's, I'm going to change this back real quick to just a simple one, two, three, one, two, three. So now we can access this array variable, this R variable, and we can do all kinds of object oriented things. Now here's a cool thing about Jupyter notebooks. If you, put in your period like that and then hit the, uh, let's see, shift key, no, the tab key. This thing will pop up and it shows you all the different methods that you can use on your array or on your anything, right? So uh, we can kind of look through here and let's just play with this for a second and let's look, there's data. Let's see what the data type is. This is kind of interesting. What is the data type of this array? Well, we can shift enter to run this and we can see it's an integer. 32 bit. Well, that makes sense. These are all integers, right? Well, let's change this. Let's change it to 0 .0, 0, 2.0, and 3.0. These are no longer integers. These are now floats, right? So if we hit enter, shift enter, we can see this changes. Now let's run this again. And we can see now it's a float of 64 bit. So that's kind of interesting. A lot of times you need to know what kind of data you've got. So we could try that. So let's tab this again, and let's just kind of look through here and see what we got. Data type, items, max, mean, if you want to find the mean of your array, well, it throws up a, mo uh, a function. It's interesting. What else do we have in here? Flatten. Mean max, man. and we're gonna get into all of this stuff as we go on. I'm just kinda, you can reshape and resize your array. It's interesting. And we'll do all these things going forward. View var transpose, that's probably a good one. So all kinds of stuff we can do. And uh, that's neat. So, so sometimes you just need to generate dummy data. So you can do this, we can go mp dot uh, zeros. So we can let's say we want uh, three items in our list. Boom, it generates zero, 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 three items. Say we want 30 items, 
generates a, a list of 30 items. Don't want zeros, we can do ones. Now they're all ones, right? We can do, you know, multi-dimensional. So let's say we want a bunch of ones and we want a matrix of five rows and six columns. Oops, need to wrap this in another set of parentheses. So we have one, two, three, four, five rows, one, two, three, four, five, six columns. And we can do the same thing with zeros. Boom, like that, that's kind of cool. I'm just creating these arrays by putting data in, but you could also feed in your own lists, right? So we could go my underscore list equals, and then just create a list, right? So we could go one, two, one, two, three, and then in here, we could just pass in my list, probably need to spell it right, my underscore list, there we go, and we get the same exact thing. We'll keep that in mind, that's kind of cool. So we could do zeros, we can do that. We can create a range, so we can go np.a range, a range, spell that right. And let's say we want to start at zero, and we want it, get, want it to go up to, but not including 10, and we want it to step in increments of two. So we get zero, two, four, six, eight, right? If we wanted to go all the way up to 10, we could do that. If we wanted in increments of one, we could do this. And now it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, 10, 11, right? We're going up to, but not including 12. That's a range. We could go, you know, 0.5, whatever you want. That's kind of cool. We could leave off the designation and just go from zero to 10. So zero, one, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine, right? So we can use some random stuff. MP comes with a random. So we can call mp.random dot rand n, and then we can say 10. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 random numbers, right? We can go two dimensional, right? That's cool. Let's make this a little more simple to look at. So two rows, three columns of random numbers. Instead of rand n, we could call rand int. So we could go say, let's go from one to a hundred just pull out one random integer, 45, right? We could designate, we want more, we want to return more of these. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, right? Just all kinds of cool stuff we could do with this. And we're gonna get into all this in much greater detail. I just wanna sort of introduce it to you in this video and show you just a few things to sort of get the, get the mind working on this a little bit, because again, this is a little boring. It's just arrays of numbers usually. And a lot of times we're not gonna really care because we're just gonna use this, this to sort of transport our numbers into something else. We're gonna use it with pandas, use it with matplotlib, use it with whatever. But uh, the more you know about this, the better. So we are gonna spend a few videos on this, really digging into some of these things and, and seeing examples of how to use them in a the real world in, in a more interesting way than just kind of doing these basic things. But we have to do these basic things at the beginning just to start to understand how to use this thing. So that's NumPy, that's how we get started with NumPy. Just remember, you're gonna to wanna to import NumPy as MP, and then you could just start using these MP instances, or whatever you wanna call them. And uh, yeah, that's cool. So play around with this a little bit, start to, you know, piece it together in your mind, arrays, NumPy arrays, they're basically just big fancy lists they can be vectors, they can be matrices, matrices, whatever the plural, plural is of matrix. And uh, so that's cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 60,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.